Okay, welcome back everyone for the second Aero update for the MotoGP challenge. So, last time what we did was we compared with the base bike that we had with wings attached to it, just like you see on um, regular MotoGP bikes these days, and we called it Aero Update 1, where we tried to improve a lot of things um, on the bike, uh, which included a different helmet design which included a rear wing on the bike and so on and all kinds of modifications to make it go faster so less drag and have more downforce. Now we were quite disappointed as you saw in our last video that we actually did almost the opposite which is not entirely true. We added a bit of drag and we added quite a bit more uh, of downforce which is a good trade-off if you're racing on a fast track. However we were hoping for lower drag and higher lift. So to continue our uh, study what we did is um, because we suspected that the rear wing was causing quite a lot of drag we kicked it out so the first thing that we did was rerun the simulation without the rear wing and what we saw then was that drag stays more or less the same um, <clears throat> compared to error update one slight reduction but that's within the margin of error just one newton but we did lose a bit of downforce so even though it can work and it might work for future versions, we decided to kick it out altogether. And then because we made quite a lot of modifications to the windscreen, uh, to the helmet, uh, to the geometry around the radiators, the mudguard and so on at the same time, we wanted to see in an isolated way um, if we could actually um, find what was the biggest contributor to both positive and negative changes in drag. So we re-ran the base bike with the wings but without the rear wing and we added or stuck to the new helmet design which is much smoother which is the one that we suspected was doing um, the most beneficial work on the design and what we saw that is that drag went down to 452 newtons um, on this one which is then this simulation if I'm correct and um, we also saw that the downforce on this design um, has reduced a bit um, which makes sense because we kicked out some of the other modifications but we have now a 173 newtons of downforce so this is our new reference um, for the new and upcoming Aero Update 2. And again it's the same story as last time what we tried to do with Aero Update 2 is um, to fix the front fairing um, let's see. So what we saw on Aero Update 1 is that we had quite a lot of wake here uh, coming off the bike and we wanted to reduce that and the strategy here was um, to give a more upward angle here and then more horizontal exit angle here for the air to stay more horizontal and not overshoot the shoulders um, as much as they did on Aero Update, uh, sorry, Aero Update 1. Uh, which is over here. So on Aero Update 1 we saw that the shoulders were entirely covered in the wake coming off the fender slash windscreen uh, which was a bit too much um, so on Aero Update 2 we tried to reduce that which we did so you, you can see that the shoulder is kind of exposed again um, but we overdid it a bit too much because this vertical surface also makes for a wider wake in the horizontal uh, plane as seen vertically here. So this wide lateral overshoot is caused by this more frontal surface here at the front um, of the fender slash windscreen. So that is something that we see that can help. It actually does what we want it to do, but in the horizontal plane we need to now contract it again so for the next era update we might work with a modified windscreen which is then contracted a bit more and maybe work with a small gurney uh, to give a small kick to the air to just jump to the helmet and the shoulders but then contract again um, in, in a more um, narrow uh, com in, in a more narrow way compared to what we have here today another thing that we saw was that the front mud guard which we tried to really optimize on this design it worked it's really clean and nice this shape compared to Aero update one. If I go back here to Aero update one, here we saw that we had a much more complex design of the mud guard, and we saw that the su suspension was still exposed and so on. We tried to clean that up, which is something that we really did with this design, but we left the bolt here exposed to the airflow, and and for of course with good reason to be able to do uh, modifications and changes to the bike on the fly as you're on the track and so on. But in terms of aerodynamics, this is really not good, as you can see that this really creates a big wake which extends all the way uh, to the rest of the bodywork of the bike. So, good progress locally for the airflow here, but we introduced a new problem which we know how to actually compensate for. What we also saw is that the wings 
do help to actually structure the flow at the rear of the bike. So these kick up the air and they help to feed some air uh, to the wake behind the arms, the knees, the legs and so on. So the, the, the wings are really useful. Now if I actually go through some of the emails um, that we got, so Dr. Creations, the ones who are actually making the modifications to this bike, have created all kinds of uh, positive feedback on how to interpret these flow results, uh, combining this with previous experience that they have with wind tunnel tests and so on. Uh, so really insightful and we really look forward to the next era updates. Um, so they made all kinds of comparisons to understand why these things are happening, which is basically what I've been saying now. So it's actually their input that I'm just replicating. It's really insightful. Uh, Luca Padovani also um, did a lot of work interpreting the flow results. Um, so com combining the same things as we have here. Uh, so the one with the new helmet, but the old fender design, era update too. Error update with uh, moved wing positions, we'll get to that later, and without the wings. So all kinds of comparisons that really help to understand how the wings help to pull up the flow and feed air into other areas, how we still have flow detachment here around the belly, around the front uh, coolers on the bike, um, how we, or how he actually made slices to understand how the wake uh, does improve uh, because of the wings, because they help feed air into different areas, which you can also see from the top view, and how this also even affected the flow rates through the radiator. So all really important and really interesting stuff. Um, another thing that we also tried, or that actually um, Francesco tried um, of Dotto Creations, is to move the front wings to the front fender. Um, we're not saying that this would be allowed or anything, but just very interesting as a thought experiment. Now, it's really cool also from a mechanical perspective, because what happens is that you apply the downforce directly to the wheel, um, basically uh, to your unsprung, unsprung mass, and you provide the forces directly on the wheel, which means that you don't load your suspension and so on. So it could be good, could be bad, but definitely a very, very interesting experiment. Plus, if you move them forward, we see that the interaction with the rest of the bodywork is different. And even though we have separation, here uh, on the wing, which is something that we can mitigate by changing the actually the, the twist of this um, wing element. Uh, we can have a lower angle of attack where it attaches to the mudguard because there you have two boundary layers coming together. This is a very separation sensitive area, so we could locally lower the angle of attack here so to bring the wing element lower at the rear. And then the outer part of the wing, which is this one, can be the most aggressive one uh, because it's further away from the mudguard and can actually provide more uh, suction effect and more downforce. If you look at the pressure patterns, this is what we see. So we do see uh, a, a suction effect there, but we also see flow separation. So we could mitigate this one, um, but it's really interesting to see how this actually feeds air to the rest of the motorbike. As mentioned before, we still have a bad flow separation area here as we move around the um, belly. So the air hits the front here, um, hits the radiator, um, which does provide a bit of pressure relief um, to evacuate some of the air, but still there's a big pressure buildup in the air once you evacuate around the sides here um, so we may need to tweak the radius here further to avoid this big separation area or and or work together with the wings here um, to help uh, contract the flow make it more attached uh, to the bodywork uh, try and curve it inward and of course if you optimize this bolt this can also help to reduce uh, the flow problems that we see other things that we can try, so we want to tighten the front fender here again a bit as mentioned so we don't have this wide overshoot here in the horizontal plane, maybe shorten it a bit, uh, uh, maybe add like a gurney um, at the end of it to give that local kick to avoid um, hitting the hands and the helmet uh, full on. Um, we will cover the bike, uh, the nut here, or the bolt, bolt and nut assembly there. Um, what we can also try is maybe uh, one of these concepts where um, they cover this area here with a cover, uh, meaning that the air can uh, traverse this gap uh, instead of diving in this gap and then hitting the inside of the rim and the tire and then jumping out again, creating dirty flow here. Maybe we can guide the flow here by a static part attached to the uh, suspension here um, and then make the flow curve inward here uh, to maybe have a better flow quality here. I do suspect that some of these covers that they use are meant to create ground effect as the bike starts to lean this cover gets close to the ground and as the flow accelerates around a cover here locally, this can generate downforce pulling the wheel close to the ground, providing more grip. Um, 
So if you look at an example like this, this could be one here, uh, one of those pieces, um, it could be useful to both generate um, local downforce to, through ground effect, but also clean up the flow that you provide to this area here, which is really, really sensitive to flow separation. So that is the stuff that we will try to work on and then further improve the bellies here uh, to see if we can improve the flow separation by changing the geometry locally or by changing the angles of attack and the uh, positioning of these wings. So I I really hope you found this insightful. Please drop your comments and suggestions as to what we should do for Aero Update 3 and we'll try to take into account as much as possible. Again, thanks a lot for watching. We're still set to improve the aerodynamics of this motorbike. We just need to tweak the things that we have introduced. They have shown potential, but local um, additions of new problems like the nut um, and this wake which is too wide and so on will need to be mitigated and then we can actually finally land with a super nice and more efficient motorbike. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have comments drop them below the video and see you soon bye bye